Hey there, it's Coach Kim, and this is the Total Female Hockey Podcast, where we're going to help players, coaches, and teams take their game to the next level. Let's make some magic happen. So on today's podcast, I'm super excited to be interviewing one of my former players, uh, one of the most poised, smart, professional players I've had the opportunity to coach. Uh, Kristen Della Rovere, who I call KDR, so that's pretty much what I'm going to call her the rest of the uh, the episode here. I had the privilege of coaching KDR for four years, uh, three years with our Leaside Junior team. She was the captain for two of those years. She's also the all-time leading scorer in the program, played for Team Ontario, uh, You know, tried out for Team Canada. She had four awesome seasons with Harvard, including one insane season in 19, uh, the 2019-2020 season where she just dominated offensively um, in, in every category you can imagine. Um, she's a recent Harvard grad with a degree, you know, she's pre-med um, with a concentration in psychology. So she's a smart one. And she recently got drafted 56th overall in the PWHL inaugural draft to Ottawa, where she gets to play with my one of my former teammates and a coaching superstar uh, in Carla McLeod. So I'm thrilled to talk to KDR. We can totally nerd it out on a bunch of different subjects, um, but we're going to keep it to hockey as much as we can. So Kristen, I'm so psyched that you're here and um, that you're willing to share some of your story with us today. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Well, you know, it's, it's so cool to talk to someone, you know, you've coached who's, you know, still going in the hockey realm of things. I'm, I'm proud of every player I've ever coached. And so many of them are doing so many amazing things in their lives. Right. But it's, you know, typically, you know, the college hockey is sort of the end of the road for a lot of uh, female hockey players, you know, either by choice or just by, um, you know, their talent level. You know, you've got a really exciting opportunity here. So before we roll into kind of, um, you know, the hockey nerdy part of it, how did you feel in that moment when you heard your name called in the PWHL inaugural DAP? Yeah, I think it was the whole process was very long. I you know, originally had signed a contract to play in the PHF, um, which, you know, was a decision I was kind of boggling with for a little if I wanted to continue hockey. And then after, you know, this merge happened, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, not knowing what's going to happen, you know, where I'll be playing, if I'll be playing. Um, And so I think kind of getting the opportunity and being in that player pool and then to the moment of actually hearing your name getting drafted was very kind of emotional and like, overwhelming um unfortunately I couldn't go to the draft but I was watching the stream and you know my agent had called me like as soon as my name was and it was just like it it was a surreal experience I can't explain how it felt but it was like emotional it was happy it was like proud it was just like a big milestone in my career that I didn't really think might like wasn't necessarily possible until you know a few months ago when all this came out so it was amazing. I can't, I can't even describe it. Well, I can tell you my phone was exploding and <laughs> I, I certainly was getting texts from all over and I, I texted your mom and called your mom and, um, you know, it, it was, uh, it's just, you know, kind of full circle moment for me and, you know, a little selfishly, um, but obviously so proud of you and, and everything you've achieved in your hockey career. Um, you know, and I, and I wanted to chat a little bit about how you play hockey and and I would love if you could give some insights to our listeners, um, mm-hmm. because as I said in the intro, you know, KDR is a player who plays the incredible, incredible amount of poise, you know, and it, I'll, I'll say it always kind of looked easy for you, KDR, like you were never stressed, you were never in panic mode. Um, and we're talking about someone who's like a goal a game, you know, at the highest level in the province consistently, if not more, um, you know, where do you think? that poise came from and that that patience on the ice where you're not just running around at a million miles an hour which I think a lot of players are they think effort and just go 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 is the way to get noticed so you know where do you think that come came from and and why have you embraced that so much as your style of play oh god I think it's hard to say I think growing up and you know playing guys hockey I was never, I never saw myself as one of the best players on the team. Um, My dad might tell you differently, but 
I think I always kind of took the approach of watching my teammates and learning from others and really listening to my coaches and kind of trying things that they would tell me. And I think you kind of get to a point where once you practice something so many times, you realize that when you play, do it in a game, like you have a lot more time than you think you do. Um, and I think it just came from learning how to like protect the puck a little bit and, you know, keeping yourself off the wall will give you more time in situations and just something that happens unconsciously. But I think I really like to pay attention to others. And so, you know, I'd watch a lot of hockey growing up um, and everything. And I would not necessarily try to put those things into my own own game, but just being aware of them allowed me to, you know, um, have more options during a game. But I don't know exactly where it came from. I think it was something I just, you know, was more on the natural side of things. Well, I love a couple of things you said there. One, you know, watching the game and observing and not always saying, oh, I'm going to play exactly like player X, Y, or Z. But, you know, there are patterns in the game that I think a lot of uh, young players in the female game are not watching enough mm-hmm. hockey. Hopefully with this new league, mm-hmm. uh, they'll be more inspired to watch more women. But irrespective of what level it is, if it's your, you know, if it's an NHL team, if it's the PWHL or it's your, you know, your brother's team who's five years older mm-hmm. than you, um, just observing, you know, patterns in the game. And, you know, it's a really interesting stat that um, people have been talking about recently that 80% of the game is played within three feet of the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love what you said about, you know, staying off the wall and being poised and confident in those types of situations, because those are where a lot of the panic situations happen, right? And uh, a lack of awareness, you know, that was one thing mm-hmm. that, you know, you were always safe out there, you know, no one let KDR just skate around untouched guys, like she'd have two or three players chasing her down the ice. So, you know, your ability to, to be aware of that pressure, and be aware of space, and use that, you know, to keep yourself safe, but to make plays. You know, that's such a a critical thing that um, I don't know that players are being taught as much as I'd like to see it being taught. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so they just feel pressure, and and they play hot potato hockey. Um, How do you think, like, for you, I I just, I'm going to share a little story. So, you know, we used to have uh, player meetings, you know, a couple times a year with everybody on the team. And often I'd, you know, I'd give the players a little bit of feedback in the beginning of the season. And then as we progressed through the meetings, you know, I would ask the players to give me a little bit of feedback on what they wanted to work on or, or where they saw themselves. And uh, it is always fascinating uh, to have those meetings because, of course, you perceive, you know, you're going to share as a coach what you think the players need to work on. But it, when they share what they think they need to work on or what they're good at or what they're bad at, sometimes those things don't line up. You know, and, and I'll just share this uh, story about KDR. So we were having this meeting and I think at this point you'd, you'd played for me for a couple of years and you were in the sort of Team Ontario, Team Canada pipeline. I said, oh, what do you want to work on? And you were like, oh, I really want to work on my shot. And I laughed because, I mean, and this is a, a compliment, KDR. I think you have the, the, the quickest shot release. Like it's so hard to tell when KDR is going to shoot it forehand or backhand, but there's, it's instantly off her stick. And in the back of the net, I have lots of video footage. If anyone wants to see it of her freezing goal, like the goalies don't even move and the pucks already in the back of the net. You know, that's obviously a skill that you cultivated over a long time, but I thought it was fascinating that you said you wanted to work on your shot because at the level we were playing at, at that time, your shot was already, you know, at the top of the heap. So I really thought that was interesting. And I wonder if you could speak about you know, obviously you were thinking about the next level, right? My shot might be good enough for this level to fill the net and lead the league in scoring, but what do I need to work on to get to the next level? What's going to separate me? So I'm not asking you to go back, you know, six years and and tell me what you were thinking in that moment, but how did you approach your own development, um, you know, through minor hockey when for most of the teams you were on, at least when I started watching you in U15, you know, you're, you're, you're dominant, right? Like you, and you might, some players might think, oh, I'm already really good. So I'm just going to keep going along this track. You know, how have you consistently challenged yourself to get better and picked apart parts of your game that you need to improve on? What What's your process with that? I think the first thing is always just to be coachable and take feedback and, you know, not all feedback you receive as a player is going to be something you resonate with or 
something that you agree with, but I just think having the open mind and taking feedback and listening to coaches because someone like you, you've seen players go through the process. So even if I'm performing well, like you can tell me how that my game will translate. So kind of throughout juniors and stuff, just taking that feedback um, and trying to, you know, learn from it and put it into my game and work towards it. Um, but I also think that I kind of knew at that point that I had goals that were different than some of my teammates, um, especially in minor hockey. And I knew that like, if I wanted to get to the next level and succeed at the next level, like I would have to do things that not everyone else was doing. And so at certain ages, I found that what I was doing in practice wasn't necessarily benefiting me as much as it, I wanted it to. And so I made the decision to go to sports schools as, as in peak or the Hill Academy and where I found that I got that extra training that I was looking for. And I got more focused on the skill. And then with my teams, I could focus more on my team and working on these new things. Um, but I think I just had the mindset and I kind of said to my mom, like, I kind of need something else. I want to do a little more. And I found being at those places allowed me to challenge myself more instead of just being comfortable because I knew like, you know, as you get older and as you get to these higher levels, everyone else is even better. The game's much faster, everyone's harder, shoots harder. And so I wanted to compete at those levels and make an impact. I didn't just want to play. And I found that I just had to put in a little extra work to help my game improve at the speed I wanted it to. I love that. I mean, you're really just talking about a growth mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think, you know, knowing that um, what what brings you success at this level isn't necessarily going to bring you success at the at the next level. And and that's true, you know, if you're going from where you are, like college hockey to professional, or if you're going from house league to your first mm -hmm. year of rep, right? Like what you did before to get there doesn't put you at the top of the heap at the next level. I think that's a really good observation to share with everybody today, mm -hmm. because I think, you know, uh, we can get comfortable and going, oh, uh, I was the show last year in U15 AA. Obviously, I'll go to U18 now and just, you know, automatically mm -hmm. get all the ice time or automatically score all the goals. Um, and how did you find that, you know, I when you went from junior into your college hockey career, um, you know, obviously playing at a, a remarkable university academically and athletically in Harvard, you know, what was your transition like there in terms of um being able to take what what you do in your game and contribute to what the the Harvard style of play was how did you find that first season in transition yeah well I think it kind of starts with like I was very fortunate for my whole career of having great coaches um and I think you know the one thing that I really appreciated with you is that it's not all sunshine and rainbows, you know, there's, you're going to get feedback, you're going to get told things um, that aren't always nice to hear. And I think when I was choosing my college team and going through the recruitment process, I wanted a coach that wasn't going to just tell me, you know, you're amazing, you're all this stuff, because that's what you want to hear during the recruitment process. And I specifically remember kind of my coach asking me, like, what are you going to bring to this school when you come? And she like gave me a day to think about it. And I think the whole mindset there was like, you have to earn everything that, you know, you're going to get in this program. And that was something that I wanted was just, you know, a chance to prove myself um, and knowing that it was an opportunity and I could take it and I could work for it. And so I think transitioning to my freshman year was hard. You kind of go from, there was no other team Canada or Canadian players in my class. They were all American. I didn't really know anyone. And so I was going to this team full of good players that I had no current friends on. And I didn't know the coaches. And I think it was like a clean slate. Like you go from playing juniors and being a somebody where everyone knows you. Now you're going to school where you're essentially a nobody. Um, and so I think with that transition, it was just about working for everything and earning it and again just being coachable taking what the coaches are telling you taking whatever role you're initially put into um I was fortunate enough where I was playing 
you know, a top six forward role my freshman year, but I didn't start on power play. I didn't start on PK. And just by the end of the year of proving myself and working towards it, I got the opportunity to get these special teams. And I think it just came down to like, not necessarily forgetting about your junior hockey career, but you kind of have to leave your ego at the door and just know that you have an opportunity to work for things, but nothing's going to be given to you. Um, so I just took the time to, you know, do the extra skill sessions if I needed it and just kind of learn from everyone around me. That's an awesome answer. And I hope everybody listening heard what she said, right? That nothing's going to be handed to you, but you are going to have the opportunity to earn it. Um, you know, and I, and I, I think back to my own college career many, many decades ago, um, and, you know, going in there as a defenseman and then being told after two days that actually you're a forward and, and really being, you know, KDR played more than I did in the beginning, but same situation, you know, no special teams, you know, uh, I was probably in the third or fourth line, not in the top six, right. But you have an opportunity in your freshman year to really, you know, show the coaches how hard you're willing to work and the things you're willing to do and the, your mindset about growing and getting better. You know, if your um, instinct there now, now, keep in mind, you know, KDR's coming out of a junior career where she's finished top in the league in scoring. She's been on Team Ontario twice. She's been invited to Team Canada camp. You know, a lot of people in your situation, KDR, might have been like, well, of course I'm going to be on the power play or the penalty kill, or at least I'm going to get one of them, right? And a lot of the listeners might think the same thing. How how in the world is this player not getting special teams? But that's the reality of the situation when you move up a level, right? It doesn't matter if you were a superstar in the level b before, um, you know, you can't just expect to be entitled to get what you've always gotten. You've got to do what other people won't do in order to get what you want. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I love that. It'll be, you know, be interesting to see as you, you know, uh, get through training camp in Ottawa and, and hopefully get into the season, you know, what your experience will be transitioning, um, you know, from Harvard uh, into that pro environment. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you, you know, I know you very well. I know your whole hockey story very well. I know you've overcome some really big hurdles in terms of, you know, injuries, you know, not, you know, making some teams that you've wanted to make, um, you know, maybe some coaching challenges along the way. And as I said in the intro, right, this girl was just lightening the league on fire in 2019, 2020. Like, I'm not even joking. I was impressed. I'm hard to impress checking out all her stats. And of course, at the end of that season is when, uh, you know, the lockdowns happened and, and we weren't playing hockey for a while. That's to me that, you know, that's the one that you know, probably hurts you the most. It hurts me the most because it, you know, it was all coming together. You know, how do you mentally um, overcome those types of challenges and adversity? You know, what, are, what are your strategies or what's your outlook to go? Okay. Like I'm not, you know, I'm kind of on this trajectory, but I keep, you know, running into walls or getting tripped up along the way. How do you stay focused and, and motivated to get uh, to where you are now? Yeah, well, I think it's not easy. Um, I think you kind of get to a point where, okay, yeah, you get knocked down once, you get knocked down twice. But, you know, after five, six times, sometimes it can be kind of hard. And I think for me, there was different, depending on the situation, there were different things that would help me. I think the biggest thing is just an overlying picture of, you know, these certain small moments don't define you as a player. And a lot of those things are kind of out of your control. So just reminding myself to focus on what I can control. You know, I can't control that we don't have a season during COVID. I can't control if I um, got cut for a team, like that ship had sailed. And I'm like, now it's just time to get to work and, you know, keep working and hope that another opportunity will arise and just trusting that, you know, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Like everyone has a different path in hockey. No one, no two paths are the same. And knowing that what I'm doing right now, as long as I'm doing what I can, I'm going to be okay in the future. And I'm going to end up where I want to end up. And I think I also took time to kind of connect and get help from people around me. Um, there were times when it wasn't easy, but I think having, you know, very supporting parents, 
you know, having supporting coaches as yourself and friends, like there were times where it was hard, but I had people, you know, helping push me and helping motivate me in the times that I needed it. Um, but I just think it comes down to looking at the overall picture, the overall goal. And, you know, one of my biggest goals was to, it changed with time, but was to be a professional hockey player. And so now to have that opportunity, it kind of makes all the other things so small and not necessarily forget them, but, you know, you, you don't focus on those negative things. You kind of are just happy to be in this, you know, be a professional hockey player now. That's a, it's amazing the mindset and you've always had this mindset, um, which, you know, having known you since you were 13 and 14, it's, it's pretty rare um, for, for players of that age to have this growth mindset and, you know, to be able, you know, to, to, when you're going through those challenges and I've seen it, right. It's really, you know, hard to then be in front of your team or be in the hockey environment and kind of make it look like it's, it's not affecting you. And and that was one thing. I don't know if I ever told you that, but I was always amazed when these challenges were happening to you, um, you know, how it, it, I won't say it rolled off your back. You weren't like, whatever, it's all cool. <laughs> um, but just, you know, coming in and, and still having that professional attitude and mindset and and putting in the work. And, you know, at the end of the day, you and I both know we're just chasing a little black thing around the ice, right? It's <laughs> not the end of the world, um, you know? And, and so I love what you said about remembering the big picture and, and end up everyone having a different path, you know, your path yeah. to where you got to so different than mine. I will say, Katie is probably the only player I've ever had who, you know, during the recruiting process, when you're coaching junior, all the college coaches call you to ask about the players, which is a lot of time, it takes a lot of time to manage this. And I always laughed because, you know, Kristen was so talented that every single division one coach and every single, you know, youth sports coach, especially the ones in Ontario are calling me to talk about Kristen, which is fantastic that's like 40 people and I love talking about KDR but I it always made me laugh because I'm like yeah yeah she's great and she's great and and yes and she's also great and you know I, I always thought to myself you know I spent a lot of the time on the phone for you KDR um and I should send you that bill uh one day <laughs> for that year um but you know the interesting part about that that I always you know I use this as an example it's you know, even though you had so much interest and, and so many teams and coaches speaking to you, you know, your process was still a difficult decision. Um, and it, it's a different kind of difficult than someone who only has one or two teams looking at them. Um, but still, you know, I know you agonized at times over the decision and the opportunities and where to go. Um, but I think that's emblematic of, of everyone's hockey career, right? There's, there's challenges mm -hmm. along the way that um, not everyone's going to see, or, or, you know, no one would think, oh, KDR, she would have had a hard recruiting process. Well, it was hard in a different way. Right. And, yeah. and, and you earned the, the right for it to be hard, but, you know, I wanted to, to ask you, and, and this is something I know I've, I've always said to your mom, and I don't know if I said to you, but I think your game is built for the professional game, right? Like the, the poise, the hockey IQ, the ability to control the play, but the ability to play off the puck, make things happen. Um, for everybody else, I think that's, you know, what a, a professional level hockey player does. And, you know, you were doing that at, at 14 years old, as you go into training camp, uh, next month, or I guess in November with Ottawa, how do you see yourself contributing? Maybe it's the same question Katie, uh, asked you back when you went to Harvard, but what do you think you can bring to your team or even more generally to the professional level? You know, what, what, what do you think is going to be maybe not your role, but what are the the aspects of your game that you think are, are going to allow you to contribute it to the team success? I think I, well, one of the biggest things I'm excited for is just, I know this isn't necessarily what I'm contributing, but you know, you're at a league where you have the best players in the world. This will be like, you know, 200 of the best players. Um, and it's, definitely going to be new I've never been in this situation before and playing with girls who are a lot older than me um, and I think again just keeping that growth mindset of learning from my players around me you know I, on Ottawa we have like Jenner Clark and Mashmeyer who are three Olympic players who are older who have been through a lot in their careers and so kind of just looking to hear from them and learn from them um, I think from my own game 
one thing I am excited for is because I am a bigger and stronger player, uh, I'm excited to be able to use my body more. I know that sounds kind of funny, but I found a lot of the times in the college level, because there are some players who are very small, I would have a tough time using my body because I would get penalties called or I would just be afraid to get a penalty called. Um, and I think, you know, being at this level, I'm more excited to be able to kind of lead with my body more and um, kind of use my strength a little more. Um, kind of like you mentioned, like, you know, my poise, my 200 foot game, I think I can bring that. You know, I hate this question because I hate talking about myself. Um, but I think I am excited to play with some really smart players and play with some really good players and kind of see where my game goes within that. I think that's something that was kind of missing in the past is maybe, you know, getting to play with one or two great players, but, you know, not having, you know, a lot of players to make plays and a lot of players that are kind of on the same page with you during a game. So I'm kind of excited to see what happens now with a lot of very skilled, very good players. No, it's a great point, you know, talking about playing with older players and, and, you know, their experiences and, you know, I, I I'd love to see you and Jenner playing together, just like even for a, a hot minute there. Um, you know, I coached her a little bit at team Ontario and, and coached against her many years in our league. And um, you know, that's a, a player that, you know, it's hard to compare to, but, you know, I, I see a lot of mm -hmm. similarities in, in your game as in her game in that, you know, she makes the players around her better. Um, you know, she gets to play with Poulin, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I think, you know, if she's <laughs> playing with anybody, um, you know, that, that line is instantly uh, going to be impactful. Like you said, at 200 feet of the ice, right. She's not just down there at the far blue line waiting for pucks. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think that's a great, a great point, right? That 200 foot game, you know, if, if you're going in somewhere new, right. So you're going into pro, but say you're a, a high school player going into college or, you know, you're an A player moving up to double A or, or triple A, um, you know, you can't expect to come in and drive the bus offensively and, and be, you know, the one uh, right out of the gate. Right. And so sometimes what you're doing away from the puck without the puck defensively, that's kind of your opportunity to get noticed. It's not going to just be, okay, well, I'm going to have the puck on my stick for minutes every game. So obviously I'm going to do my dangles. You know, you might not touch the puck for longer than 10 seconds in a game. How else can you make an impact, right? And I, I don't mm -hmm. think that's something that's focused on enough. And I'm sure you did this when you were a young player, but I would encourage, you know, players on the call, you know, watch the professional hockey, the women, the men, and watch what the players who don't have the puck do. Right. So if you have a favorite player, say you love the Leafs and, you know, pick a player, Marner, and, and just watch Marner's entire shift, not just when he has the little black thing, but what he's doing to support when he's away from the puck and, you know, how he's changing and how he comes in off the bench and, and all those little details. Because I think we get so focused on what I'm going to do when I get the puck that we don't even think about how do I support my team in getting it back or how do I support my teammate once she has it. So I think that's a great, um, you know, way to kind of, uh, we'll put a little cap on the, the hockey talk, although we could nerd about nerd out. I would love to talk about your backhand, um, bar down shot is just fire, but you know, KDR once this is a KDR pump up podcast. I hope you listen to this in the future. I still have video of you uh. stealing the puck from someone at the blue line. This is in junior guys, just like not no slouch coming down, just protecting the puck on her backhand with somebody on her, like defender on her just rips it like bar down, like a backhand wrist shot from the top of the circle. The video on it's actually pretty good. You don't always get great video in junior hockey with like corners and nets, but <laughs> I, I, the goalie didn't even move. I was like, oh, I love this goal. Um, you know, it's gotta be hard to sell you after one like that. You're like, feel like you just got away with something. But, you know, I before we kind of get to a, a rapid fire here, I've, I've got one more question to you. Um, you know, it's kind of, you can think of it one or two ways here. Like what message would you give either the 10 year old version of yourself or the 10 year olds watching this draft or watching, you know, you guys, when the puck drops uh, in January, you know, what, what message would you tell them? You know, what message would you tell yourself as a 10 year old? You've got these huge dreams, you know, bigger than ever before now, because now we have a professional league, you know, what's the message that you would say to, to little KDR 
or to those, you know, 10 year olds out there who are, who are dreaming these big dreams? I think the biggest thing I would tell my younger self is just to, you know, to have fun. And I know it's cliche, but I think you kind of get to, as you get older, the game changes more from just a loving sport to a job as well. Um, and I think, you know, just to, if you remember always why you love the game and why you started playing, then even the moments when it gets harder as you get older, you can always fall back on, you know, the love for the game. But I think, especially the girls watching the draft, you just just know that anything is possible and to continue to dream big. Um, when I was a 10-year-old player and people would ask me what I want to do, and I'd say, oh, I want to play in the NHL when I'm older. Um, and that's just because there was no you know, sustainable professional league. But I think these girls worked so hard specifically for the next generation and to have this opportunity. And so I think that it should just be motivation for these girls and to know that they can dream anything and they believe anything, then it is possible. And I think this is just a testimony to that. Um, so I just think that, you know, have fun, live your own path and do your own thing and continue to dream big and work hard. That sounds like my tagline. Thanks, Katie. Or thanks for the shout out. <laughs> and I, I'm just going to add on to that. And hopefully in the future, I get to talk to other uh, pro hockey players as well. But, you know, I, I really want to give a shout out, you know, to, you know, the female coaches that are on these staffs, the general managers, you know, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, you know, officials at in this league, you know, who are female. And and I just think the opportunities in hockey now for us are, are so exciting. And you see, you know, there's going to be women on the bench this week uh, with, with NHL teams in games and, you know, even behind the scenes, you know, if you want to be in the, the business side of the game, you know, the, the opportunities are really, really there. So, you know, while we all want to be like KDR and going backhand bar down from the top of the, the circle, even if you're not that yet, or you might not ever be that, you know, there is a tremendous opportunity in the women's game, um, you know, or even in the game, just in general, uh, to make that your, your full-time job. Like, how cool is that? You know, I've been a bit of an outlier doing this for the last 15 years as a full-time hockey person, uh, as a woman. But, um, you know, I'm I'm thrilled for that and to see it, you know, not just the product on the ice, but all the people behind the scenes who are, you know, who are, you know, living a dream in a different way, never thinking, man, I was going to work in a, a pro hockey league. How awesome is that? Um, I'm also going to ask you to give motivational speeches to my daughters uh, <laughs> on occasion. So that's another side hustle for you. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of a rapid fire. You haven't seen any of these. Uh, some will be less rapid than others. My first question, it's a very important question. Okay. I wore number 11 at Dartmouth. You wore number 11 at Harvard. Why did you pick number 11? Um, honestly, number 19 was taken. And number 11 was my mom's like high school um, number for basketball and everything. So I thought, why not be 11? Oh my God. I love that. Shout out to Elizabeth, like best hockey mom <laughs> ever. Not even yes. a, not even a question there. Uh, I didn't think it was because of me. That's I, as I asked the question, I, I was like, that oh, was the second me. reason. Yeah, you don't have to lie to me. It's fine. <laughs> I did finish with more points than you. I just want to point that out. I think we might need to check the stats over four years yeah. who had more points in four years, but so my, my 11 might've beat yours just slightly. I, <laughs> I chose 11 because eight was taken. So uh, same story. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, 7 a.m. practice or 10 p.m. practice? 7 a.m. Oh, same, same here for sure. Those 10 p.m.ers yeah. are tough. Um, here's a good one. If you re even remember back this far, uh, dots or the four minute mile? Four minute mile. Oh, interesting. Those are the skating, four minute mile. the skating drills I, I used to do with these guys <laughs> on our team. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, it's interesting. I, I'd be interested to ask more players what they thought. Uh, Dots is kind of more stopping and starting. Four yeah. minute mile is a little bit more flow. You do have a majestic stride, the four minute mile, even if you weren't going hard, it probably would still look like you were going hard. So exactly. <laughs> you, can, you can cheat that one pretty well. I like that. Um, huh. Just so you know, I don't do that with, with my daughter's U9 team in case you were wondering, that's not oh, the Dots that's and the so four nice minute mile. That's so nice of you. I know. And it would probably wouldn't make it. That'd be in practice. Um, okay. White tape or black tape? White tape. I knew we were friends. 
I don't get the black tape thing, but you know, now my yeah. daughters have like super colorful tape. That's even worse. So <laughs> I'll take black tape over uh, the you know <sighs> bright yellow tape any day. All right. Uh, forehand or backhand? Forehand. That release, guys. Uh, you're going to watch it in the, the PWHL. There's going to be some <laughs> snipes. We're like, how does she shoot that coming off that forehand? Just ridiculous. <laughs> um, you know what, KDR, this has been amazing. We could talk all day about hockey and life and maybe we will again you know i'd love to chat with you uh once the season's rolling a little bit if you've got time for us little people down the line um and really you know hear about your experience in the new league um you know i know we're gonna we're gonna stay connected and and chat throughout the whole process but you know i really appreciate uh your time and your insights and and sharing your experience um and is there anything else you'd like to share or any other Anything else to fire up anybody listening to this call who's, you know, chasing their big hockey dreams? God, I don't know if I have any any great motivation. Um, I would just say, you know, scoring goals is fun. Oof, that's a good one. Yeah, that you know what? That's a great one, KDR, because <laughs> I run a lot of practices where people do the drill and they get to the end. And it's like that shot oh. at the end is a throwaway. And that's the best part of a drill is I getting agree. to shoot on a goalie yeah or even in the empty net i mean sometimes we miss the net on the yeah. empty net the, those invisible goalies can be tricky um yeah no it, uh, well they, you've heard it from a, a great goal scorer but you know it was the same for me i remember when i went to dartmouth because i was a d they switched me to forward and i can't that must have been our, our assistant coach shout out to mark amazing guy <laughs> taught me a lot um about how to play forward although i think he was a d um he would tell me that after every shot you've taken, put the rebound in the back of the net, like even if like the mm -hmm. goalie's on the next shot or doing So I, I don't think I like became besties with all our goalies at Dartmouth because I was like finishing my own rebounds while they were squaring up to the next shot. But, you know, players out there, if you're a goal scorer in our game, it is huge. It has a tremendous value. And so, you know, even if you're a little seven or eight year old, like my daughters or you know, you're, you're playing at a higher level, like you are a goal scorer. I don't care what position you play, even the goalies, like get it, sauce it down the ice, make it happen. Uh, because, you know, goals are currency in the female game. And the more you got, uh, the more valuable you're going to be. That's just the truth, <laughs> you know, still pass and, and get open and cheer when your buddies score. But um, no, that's awesome. Scoring goals is fun, KDR. <laughs> I hope that you score many of them uh, at the next level when you get in the PWHL. But even if, even if you don't, uh, we'll still be cheering for you. She's got a great stick, great mindset. Um, and she's going to make some magic happen at this next level. So thanks, KDR. I appreciate all your time and uh, keep working hard and dreaming big.